Christ uh, says something that each and every one of us uh, should be mindful of. Uh, he read into our hearings that Christ the Savior, uh, who cannot lie, who cannot lie, assure you and I of this one thing. In the very first sentence, he says that offenses will come. Uh, if you've lived any length of time, you ought to realize that troubling times are going to come. Uh, people are not always going to get along. Friends are not always going to be friends. There are going to be some good times and some bad times. Man. There are going to be some ups and some downs, some highs and some lows. He is teaching and preparing his disciples to realize that life will not be a place full of roses. Mm -hmm. For every rose there is a thorn in the life that we live. Man. And therefore it is incumbent of us not to get too high or get too low but to keep our hands in the master's hand. Yeah. He teaches them that in the very first verse that it is impossible to go through life without having some offenses mm -hmm. and trauma in your life. Man. How many times have we found ourselves asking God why? Why this and why that? How many times have we allowed things to happen in this life that cause us to have a place for hatred, a place of division, a place of anger in our heart? The Hebrew writer said that we can have a place, a root of bitterness that exists and dwell in our hearts. Yes. But there is a word from the Lord if you're here this morning and you find yourself with secret resentment and secret pain and secret hurt and even sometimes questioning God as Job did in Job chapter 23. There is a word from God this morning that says it just takes a little bit. There is encouragement from God. Uh, in the very second verse, he says for every person, and y'all ought to be happy right now, uh -huh. for every person, Yes. And everything that ever hurt one of his children, uh -huh. it had been better for that devil to have wrapped a millstone around his neck mm -hmm. than to have put his mouth oh, or his hand oh, yeah. or whatever on you. Man. I don't know yes. about you, but I get happy when I know that God yes. has my back. Uh -huh. I get happy when I know that when I'm down, God has positioned himself to lift me up. I, I, I get happy when folk talk about me and folk push me and folk, folk challenge me. And I just turn over to God because I've learned that God is able to do more with our situations and yes. more with our office than we ever could do. Our hate will make us sick. Our anger will cause us to have ulcers. Our pain will cause us to stay up late at night. Anxiety will make you wake up out of your sleep. But if you'll just take your rest and put your hands in the master's hand, yeah, uh -huh. everything is going to be alright. I'm just talking to three people yes, that's full of the Holy Spirit this morning Man. that have learned that, yep, some bad times are going to come. Yes. Folk going to lie on you, misuse you. There's going to be some days that stuff come out of nowhere, but you still got to hold on yes. to God's unchanging hand. Amen. That's why Peter said, Peter said as he learned from God in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 7, cast your cares upon the Lord, for the Lord cares for you. Cast your burdens upon the Lord, for the Lord cares for you. I don't know about you, but when you know God cares for you, you just can't sit in the church and look like you uncared about. Yeah. Do you not understand the God of heaven cares about you? Do you not understand that when you're hurting, God is hurting? That when you feel down, you look at me funny? But in Acts chapter 7, when Stephen was being stoned, the Bible said that they looked into the heavens and they saw Jesus standing on the right hand side of God. When uh -huh. folk are stoning you, when brothers are not acting like brothers, you can count on God has your 
he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. But hard times are going to come. Amen. And for that, we ought to be glad because when they do, they invoke the power and the riches of God. What should I do when folk that I love let me down? What should I do when families offend me? What should I do when the church seems like they left me? He says, well, let me tell you, this is what you should do. Number one, you need to learn how to forgive them. Right. Yeah. Amen. You, yeah. you, you need to learn how to forgive uh. them. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Y'all got, got quiet on me. Oh, yeah. uh, Second Corinthians chapter two, about the 11th, 12 twelve verse. He says, "As Christ has forgiven you, yes. you are to also what? Yeah. Forgive yeah. them, yeah. because Christ forgave you for the Father. Say, Christ forgave us. We ought to be able to forgive yeah. one another." Yeah. Uh -huh, because forgiveness is empowering. But I got to tell the truth right now. Sometimes I don't feel like forgiving. Amen. Uh, yeah, now, uh, uh, amen. All right. Oh, yeah. so, so, Sometimes it's hard to forgive. Amen. Preach. And so one Preach. disciple said, well, how often should, should we forgive? forgive? Look at the verse. He says, well, you need to forgive them uh, uh, according to the seventh cultural rule, uh, seven times 70. You need to forgive them, and you need to forgive them as much as it takes. You need to forgive them to make sure that you get clearance for yourself. Amen. Because if you don't learn how to forgive, <coughs> you'll live a life full of resentment. You'll live a life full of secret hate. How many have walked around sometimes and just hated somebody? Tell the truth and say the truth. How many of you walk around and said, if I see that joker tomorrow, I'm going to take, I'm going to take flight on him. And y'all got to tell, come on now. Every now and again, we get to a point we forget what Jesus taught about forgiveness, and we find ourselves ready to take flight. I was going to take flight Tuesday. Great. <laughs> but they ain't got good. But you know, here's what I learned about getting ready to take flight. The fuel that it takes to take flight was getting me sick. Mm -hmm. Because the person I wanted to take flight on, I was meeting other folk, and I was mad at him or her, and I was taking it out on, yeah, on other folk. Amen. Right. I, I, I knew who I wanted, yeah. but I couldn't get them. Yes. Now he's saying so. I, I need some real folk up in here. Right. I need some real. So I got y'all. Y'all playing. Y'all. I got a few real folk. I need some. I need some real folk. I. 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 I knew how. I. I, I knew I wanted to catch him by the coat machine. Yes, boy. Yes, boy. And if I could get five minutes, while I would work it out. You know. But I couldn't. Get, I couldn't get it. He broke. He, he changed his pants. He didn't come to the coat machine while I was over there waiting with my glasses off. And when I take my glasses off. I mean, bit now. When those who got my glasses on, we gonna pray, amen. Yeah. But if I take my glasses off, that's not Greg. That's Gregory. Uh, Gregory don't speak English, uh, amen. He, Gregory don't speak Spanish. Uh, he speak another lot, amen. And, and so I had my glasses. I was ready, but 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 now in between that time, somebody else came to the coke machine and said, "Are oh, you waiting to use the coke machine?" I was already mad. I said, "Do it look like I'm waiting on the coke machine?" What, what you wanna do? You know, make it light on yourself. You know, I don't care if it did vote for Trump. Y'all tell you Yeah. Oh, praise God, praise God. Cause when you get in that zone, when you get hot, and you need to remember, you said that God has your back, and you don't have to do anything but just turn it over to God. Amen. You know, when you turn that stuff over to God, that toxin is that poison comes out of you, and you can rest at night, and you won't be tense. You know, I don't know about you, but I get man, I, I can't even stand still. I get the oh, moving, yeah. and I get the moving around. I can, you know, get the working a little bit. You know, I mean, you know, I, you know and don't. And if I get real, man, I take my shoes off. Amen. Right. Hey, amen. So you know, I can leave my shoes on. Y'all ought to say amen right. uh -huh, because I forgot oh, what Jesus yeah. said. And then yeah. Jesus says something in the text that really blows my mind. Jesus says that uh, uh, you have little faith. And for years I allowed folk to teach me that <clears throat> faith is a measure of faith. In other words, they taught me quantity and not quality. Well. God don't need a lot of nothing to help you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> God don't need to send an army into your situation. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. God don't have to move mountains because you can move them. Right. God don't need to send 55. All God says is that you owe ye of little faith. Mm -hmm. He said, don't you know that with a little faith, uh -huh. you can speak to the trees in your life well, mm -hmm. and tell the tree to get out your way <laughs> and it'll start moving? In other words, if you look at the text, he does not say I'm going to give you anything, mm -hmm. but they already have what they need. To Man. deal with everything. Man. And they don't have a lot of it. Well, y'all missing this. Well. They just got a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. 
other words, a Christian with just a little bit of faith mm -hmm. can stand in the face of the giants in their life Amen. and say, get out of my way, and the giants got to move. Amen. A Christian with just a little faith has within him, needs nothing from God, but just a little faith can look at the winds and the waves of their life and say, be still, and they got to get still. Uh -huh. A Christian with a little faith can stand up even when they made a mistake, raise their head up and say, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and uh -huh. should stand in the latter time. Yeah. You don't need a lot of faith. You don't have to have the faith of everybody else. You just need a little faith. A little faith. Y'all say I got ready to go home. Yeah. You just need a little faith. Is there anybody out here this morning that have a little bit of faith this morning? Amen. 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 If you got a little bit of faith, mm -hmm. it qualifies you to be able to not worry about the quantity of your faith, but the quality of your faith. Yes. The quantity of your faith normally is put on display to say, look at me and the, the, the quantity of my faith. It is measured in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 about the second verse when God says, so a man say that I have faith, that I can move mountains, that I can restore all my goods to feed before. But if I don't know how to love somebody, that kind of faith profited me nothing. Oh yeah. But if I have just a little faith, yeah. that I can take what little I have and love my enemies Man. in spite of their behavior, Man. God said I'll move mountains yes, in your life. Am I right about it? Man. It was little faith people who were found in Matthew 16, verse 15, 5 through 12, when Jesus marveled at their intellect and said, why are you worrying about bread, about bringing bread to this meeting? He said, don't you know that if you just had a little faith, you have the bread of life standing right beside you. In other words, you don't worry how much groceries you got, as long as you got the saving in your life that supply the groceries. In the first place, y'all are saying, amen. Amen. with just amen. a little faith, huh? the Bible says, oh ye of little faith, why reason among yourselves? Because you have not bought bread. When Jesus says, I am the bread of life, y'all are saying, amen. Yes. The little faith folk, in Matthew 6, 25, and verse 34, marvel not about food and raiment and money all the time. He said, but well, let me tell you something, with just a little faith, huh? you can walk outside and and look at the ground, how God clothed the grass and the ground that you look at. How he feeds the little birds, I'm about to say. Uh -huh. Now those said, just remember in his word, uh -huh. how he fed the little birds. Uh -huh. Take your burdens to the Lord and lead them there. And then he says, uh, oh ye of little faith, uh, if the Father of heaven clothed the ground and he, got, and he does stuff in the day and tomorrow he goes into the oven, how much more will the Father take care of you and I? This very morning, it just takes a little faith huh, that you can speak to the giants in your world, that you can pick up three smooth stones oh, and yeah. knock giants right out the box. Yeah. 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 It was just a little faith. Huh, and Matthew 8, 23 through 27, that Jesus standing in the boat huh, and he found men huh, who, were, uh, who were nervous, who, were, who had faith, but they had great faith to get in the boat, but didn't have enough faith to stand on Jesus' name. Huh. And as the storms rolled in their life, huh, they came and woke and said, Master, cast thou not if we perish. Jesus woke up, woke him up out of his nap, out of oh, his brooded yeah. nap, and mind his own bitch said, Oh, ye yeah, of little faith. In other words, you had what you needed. You didn't have to wake me up. All you needed was a little faith. Man. Just a little faith. Yes. And the Bible says, Why are you afraid? I don't know what you're dealing with this morning, but Jesus said to you right now, Why are you afraid? If you got a little faith, you can beat your problem. Well, preacher, I'm dealing with financial problems. Do you have just a, a, a little faith? Uh -huh. Well, I'm dealing with loss in my life. Do you have just a little, little. A little faith? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going through changes on my job. Do you have just a little faith? Because little faith? if you have just a little faith, you can speak the stuff. You can order things. You can change things in your life by the faith of the quality of faith and not the quantity that you have in praise God. Amen. Aren't you glad this morning that you have to have a lot of faith? Because to be perfectly honest with you, there's not a whole lot of people that have a lot of faith. Uh -huh, because sometimes life can beat the faith out of you. Am I right? Uh -huh, sometimes you get to going through stuff, ups and downs, there are more downs than ups, and all you got left is just a little faith. I, I know what the preacher is preaching, but sometimes you tell the preacher, look, you got to go on somewhere with that. Because you've been preaching that all year. And I'm down now to just holding on God's unchanging hand. Man. Things didn't get better. You know, how long did they preach prosperity preaching? And folk didn't get richer. They just stayed in the same position that they were in. Crippled Dollar got richer. But they didn't get richer. Y'all ought to say amen. Yeah. Yeah. 
All the jakes didn't get richer. Hey, he got richer. But the congregation didn't get richer. How long have you been preaching things are going to get better? Ah, uh, my faith is dwindling, and I need to know why God stops it just a little favor. Well, you remember when it was Job standing by the graveside of ten children and bearing his ten children and standing there and he's standing there on his knees. Uh, you might recall that it's not a statement that's powerful, but what's powerful is that Job, who was seen at first with great faith, a man that had great credit with God, now is broken down to his knees. Uh, his tears are in his eyes and his wife comes up to him uh, and said, Job, uh, why in the world would you be praising God? Uh, why would you still believe in God? Uh, won't you curse God and die? Ten of our children uh, laying down here dead. Uh, but with what faith Job had left, uh, with what faith Job had in reserve yeah. take, he lifted up his eyes and said, why you talk like a foolish woman? Let me write about it. Uh, he lifted up his eyes and said, why would I Just use your 
Holy Ghost, he said to us. God said in his word in Ephesians 3, verses 20, and then verse number 20, he said, Now to him that is able to do a seemingly abundantly above all we may think of as. As to him, listen, it's according to the power that worketh in us. Let me say it again. Now to him that is able. I need you to understand something. You're asking God for something you already have. Let me talk to this side. You're asking God for something you already have. Uh -huh. he, now, the Bible says that him that is able to do more and abundant than we could ever think or ask of him according, now watch this, according to what? According to the power that is working, that means continue to work it in us. There's something in you that won't commit suicide. There's something in you that won't give up. There's something in you that keep trying. There's something in you that raise your hand up and say, I'll be all right. He said, there's a power inside of you. He said, and I'm not going to move until you use that power inside of you. Yeah. And when you use what you already got inside of you, we'll come together and we'll do more than you can ever think or ask with the power that's already inside of you. Yeah. Inside that power, my friend, is just a little faith in which the world without it has not been able to defeat. When you leave here today, leave here saying, I'm a Christian with little faith, but I can do some big things. Yeah. One of my favorite most poetic and most prolific rappers on the face of earth. Named Jay-Z, son of son. Big Pippin' spinning cheese. Mm -hmm. Check it out now. Big Pippin' now with those B-L-A-D's. Mm -hmm. Big Pippin' in the NYC. Oh, yeah. It's just a jigger man. Y'all ought to say it. Y'all come on now. When you got a little faith, you can take this world, you pimp this world if you want to. Because God sure enough is in control. Amen. Yeah. If you believe yeah. God for can you stand right now? If you oh, believe yeah. God is a big God, we believe in God because God believes yeah. in us. Man. And I may not have everything, but I got a little faith. And having a little faith, I can do anything. Amen. Man. Man. If you believe God for that this morning, if you believe that from God this morning, if you got a little faith, can you just shout amen this morning? Man. If you got a little faith, can you just clap with your hands together and say thank you, Jesus, for the little that you have? Can you say thank you, Jesus, right now? Can somebody shout thank you, Jesus, right now? Just a little faith. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Here this morning, not a member of the church. You don't have any faith. You need to hear the word of God. Why? Because Romans 10 and 17 says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's how you got faith. You had to hear the word of God. Do you believe what you heard? Mark 16 and see, he that believes that is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. Luke 13 and 3, now I tell you, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Confess him. Matthew 10, verse number th uh, 32, Romans 10. Uh, you'll find, he says again, that confession is made with the mouth which believed in the heart, but that is a step unto salvation. Then you must put him on in baptism. And not just baptism in anything. You have to have enough faith right. You are baptized into the body of Christ. Romans 6 and 1, many of us that were baptized, we were baptized into his resurrection. We are raised up in the newness of the life of Christ. Uh, when you're baptized, you're not baptized into anybody, but you're baptized into the church of Christ. Yeah. And if you just got a little faith right now, you may not know.